Neck Ultima Verba. Crispy cream. They have the donuts and then they cut out the circles and the holes and then they just throw them out. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm sure they I'm sure they started making donut bites, but like, I sincerely doubt there's a donut bite for every donut, you know? Donut bite, yeah. I don't know. I mean. <laughs> See, I, I could not work a Krispy Kreme because they just throw out so many donuts every day and I'll be no, so tempted it. to just start snacking. Ten, nine, eight, seven, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven, twelve, thirteen, fourteen, fifteen, sixteen, seventeen, eighteen, nineteen, twenty. Twenty-one. Yep. Got, Got it. it. Yeah? Cool. Yeah. Hello, everybody, and welcome back to the Any Last Words podcast. My name is Callan. And it's me, Manager Reggie. You can oh tell my by God. my voice. You and can really uh, tell by her voice. That that's oh, yes. This is Manager Reggie right there. Absolutely. No, it's actually me, Brandon. Wow. Holy shit, that was so convincing. I know, I know, I know. Really. You should, like, teach classes, you know, impressions. I should. Yeah. I should, I should, I should. Do some celebrity impressions for us right now. Oh, I hate you. Um, okay. <laughs> <laughs> okay, okay, all right. Um, uh, uh, give me, okay, give me a celebrity. Uh, tried and true, Arnold Schwarzenegger. Uh, 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 another one, another one. Uh, 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 Capaldi. Yes. <laughs> Wait, no, sorry, sorry. Um, it's more like Och, I'm Scottish. Yeah, there we go. Right, I'm not Scottish, am I? He oh, has no. a really low key Scottish accent. He like, does. Yeah, which <laughs> <laughs> wasn't happy about it originally, but he grew on him. Oh yeah. wait, he was putting on. Oh, I didn't know that. Okay, he wasn't well, putting it on. He just had one. It's just like as uh, uh, he, as the doctor, was like, "I'm not Scottish." No. Oh. Do you remember the tenth right, doctor? Right, right, right. He yeah. says that at some point. Yeah, yeah, yeah. He, but either who, haha, <laughs> who? I was gonna say that's a pretty yeah. good joke that you came up with there, Kim. Callan. Uh, we've got to address the elephant in the room. We He's not here, guys. And also, just. Reggie's not going to hear about this, but we, we've got a surprise planned for her next week. Don't I tell know. her. Do not yeah. tell her whatsoever in the comments or using yeah. the like button or the yeah. subscribe button or the bell notification button or following <laughs> us on Twitter or Instagram Spotify, or TikTok or Spotify, iTunes. Apple. Yeah. Yeah. I got to get around to <laughs> get around to uploading those trailers again. <laughs> I keep One forgetting. Minute. You can just do a compilation at the end of the year. Yeah, here's a trailer for everything. No, it's all gonna, it's not, it's not gonna match at all because the music restarts every time. But that's fine. Exactly. Um, but yeah, Cullen, mm. Cullen, hi. Brandon, how have you been? How have you been this past week, Cullen? That's a car. How have you been this past Brilliant. week, Cullen? I have been Brandon. Thank you for asking. I mean. How could anything go any better, you know? True. I've been staying at home a lot. I've been scrolling nice. on my favorite apps, such as TikTok, where the vast majority of our views come from. But what, <sighs> one thing that really irks me is that I've just started seeing these, like, official university accounts for, like, all our New South Wales general area universities and it's just these students, and they've started this trend of, like, our favorite top ten secret yoga spots on campus. And then it just... It's just the most abhorrent video of just this, these students going around practicing yoga in the middle of pathways and shit in what is most evidently the most obnoxious place you could possibly be doing yoga. Mm. Not to mention on campus, which is just irritating for everyone else there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. Um, see, see, that really yeah. grinds my gears. TikTok breeds these people. You have to understand. It does. So I, I'd like to just use this to reaffirm my argument that TikTok is 
a detriment to society as a whole. And we should Almost burn it to the ground. Yes. Indeed we do. Because I've never used it, so I don't really, uh, I, don't, I don't know about that stuff, but I can tell just from what I've heard. And that's enough to uh, sustain my opinion. Yeah. A uh, well-formed opinion, I must say. Exactly. You've, you've, you've remained strong. You've held out. I have not. I've fallen to uh, mostly cats. Cats, good. Cats yes. Are good. Cats what about thirty percent of the internet is made of? The other seventy percent boobs. Yeah. 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 Pretty much. The two things that perpetuate the internet. Mm hmm. Indeed. It's pretty good. Other things that irritate me, people oh, yeah. on the internet. Of course. Particularly people that have grouped together under a common cause, such as vegans. Knew it. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. There we go. We've, we've ticked that off the list. Callan hates vegans. Yeah. There we go. Enough. Tick that right off your bingo card. Yep. <laughs> but you see, what, what ving vegans do. Vegans. Yep. 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 Vegans. Yeah, yeah. do on the interwebs on their social media accounts on their twitters and facebook's and instagrams and myspaces is is they post all this food that is solely vegan mm -hmm. except you know what the problem with all this food is it, it, it's called a vegan lasagna or a vegan meat pie or a vegan turducken or a vegan fucking steak you know okay i might be wrong about this but how can you have a vegan lasagna because it isn't like the whole purpose of being vegan you don't eat animal products at all like exactly but what so... they do is they just replace all the non-vegan friendly components with vegan friendly components so you just get slices of eggplant with bits of tomato sauce, and they they call that a lasagna. So at which... what point does that? Because like, it's not lasagna. <laughs> exactly, and this is the point that I'm trying to make. Like if vegans, if you're trying to go vegan, then you shouldn't be going vegan by eating foods that are idol, you know, that are idolizing mm. the very things that you're trying to abstain from. That is what makes you more the most pretentious of all, because you're like. Oh my god, I do not miss steak at all because I just ate this mushroom and it tastes so good. It's just like steak. It is not. Yeah, that's uh ugh. It's a Eek. mushroom. Call it a fucking mushroom if you have to. Call it just just call it seasoned S mushroom. <laughs> Meat for vegetarians, Callan. Come on, get with it, you know. I I get I get veganism and vegetarianism and I respect respect it for the most part as like y'all are as, just fucking idiots and doing it wrong. Yeah, but like you know, cow tastes pretty good, right? It does. Yeah, nothing beats cow. Nothing beats cow. And if they find a way to like synthesize the taste of beef, but made out of like vegetables and stuff, so it doesn't harm the cows in the future. And hell yeah, I'll, I'll take some Amazing. of that. It's the same thing, just, you know, different materials used to make it, then why not, right? Exactly. Yeah, but... Mm. Yeah, I, I just don't want to eat a carrot steak. That doesn't sound exactly. very appealing. Or they did steak. actually do that, didn't they? Yeah. They made a carrot that tasted like... No, no, no it they was like... made steak that tasted like carrot. I don't think it was a steak... It was like a fast food restaurant. Or they, something. They had a sausage made out of carrot. That's right. Sure. Uh, sausage, it was a sausage, not a steak. And they, they, they made a sausage taste like dog shit. So then someone decided to rebuttal them with a carrot that tasted heavenly. Mm -hmm. Now I just yeah. want to preface it. I, I am a good boy. I ate all my fruits and veggies. I, I even have a favorite, you know, like bok choy. Oh, really? That's, you know, cool. That's as, cool. As all people should. I, I don't like bok choy personally. This but, is fair. You know, I, I'm, I'm quite, I'm, you know, I, I'm more so like things like broccoli. Uh, Brussels sprouts as well recently have become a favorite of mine. 
Which is interesting because Brussels sprouts are the enemy of children everywhere. I know. I know. I mean, yeah, I, I get asparagus because asparagus, it doesn't taste too bad, but it looks like the stuff of nightmares. You know? Exactly. And then 50% of the time when it comes back out, it smells like shit. Yeah, exactly. So I, I get the asparagus smell gene. Yeah, you know, I get that. But, but, you know. All veggies aren't bad. Potatoes. Potatoes are great. Potatoes are brilliant. Yeah, they're not good for you, but... No, they're perfectly good for you. We just cover them in oils and salt. And eat too much of them, yeah. Okay. That so. too, I suppose. Potatoes are good for you. Nothing wrong with potato. Nothing. Nothing at all. Yeah, we you, should just make everything on live. potatoes. You can live solely on potato. That is a diet. Yeah, it does. that's what the Irish people do. Yeah, yeah, exactly. During the Great Potato Famine. It's all they could eat. It's all that uh, magician, television, celebrity, tell no pen. You know he he went on he went on a potato diet. He ate nothing but potatoes. Hmm, worth it. He, yeah, stops being fat, I guess. Interesting. So I it do works. That. Yeah. yeah no. I would too, but I just make really unhealthy potatoes. Yeah. And um, yeah, just eat it raw. It's like an apple. Right? Exactly. Yeah. Ground apple. There you go. Exactly. Mm. Something else that really irritates me, though, oh, about yeah. vegans mm -hmm. is that <laughs> okay. they, they come at you. I mean, it's not just vegans. It's a lot of groups, but vegans do it, and it's particularly egregious. But they come at you with the carbon footprint, you know? They say, if you, if you go vegan, you're helping to save the planet. By reducing your carbon footprint. The idea of a carbon footprint is literally fossil fuel propaganda. Right. Now, like, <laughs> unironically, that, the, the, the term carbon footprint, which in, in summation is... By the way, I figured out what the buzzing noise is. It's your fan. I've always wondered what it was. That is true, yeah. It's very yeah. hot in my room right now. I can turn it off if you like. But... No, it is. It is what it is. Good, good, good. Yeah, I, I was but guilting anyway. you into uh, letting me <laughs> keep it on, but yeah, okay. Yeah, keep going about this uh, carbon yes. footprint. Uh, no, I'm not. If I'm not mistaken, I do believe it was Shell, a you know, an oil tycoon company. Very, very sketchy. It could be a completely different company for all I know. But they quite literally started this campaign slogan of carbon footprint back in the early 2000s to get people into the idea that the individual consumer was, was responsible on some level for climate change mm, because we okay. have our own individual little footprint. Mm. But in the grand scheme of things, if, what, if someone was to achieve complete carbon zero throughout their entire life which is pretty much impossible yeah. it would only register about six seconds worth of emissions from you know their local uh what is the power like fucking infrastructure and whatnot from your non-renewable energies etc they're mm. literally burning all this shit anyways and then they're blaming you for flicking a switch Right, okay, I get what you mean, yeah. Mm. And, I mean, it worked, you know, <laughs> <laughs> because for the longest time, everyone was concerned about carbon footprints and whatnot. We mm. started the whole initiative where once a year or some shit, everyone turns off all their lights to save, to, to save electricity, <laughs> when in effective reality that accomplishes next to nothing no yeah that makes sense that is literally achieving if you bother to calculate it seconds mm. minutes because at the same time all that energy is still being burnt off anyways and the carbon's being released irregardless of whether you turn on your switches right yeah so okay no that that and makes vegans, sense vegans vegans are a big part of this issue because obviously the, the the meat industry as it is is contributing to climate change and whatnot it's not as big of a factor i believe it's about 20 percent of a factor compared to uh like 
non-renewable energies and whatnot, yeah. which make up the vast majority of the rest. It makes up a factor, but it's the same thing. It is not the consumer's fault. It is not of the consumer's inherent fault that those carbon emissions are being made by the meat industry. Mm. There are a variety of factors which come back down to the meat industry itself, that they're not seeking more renewable options or net zero alternatives. I, I mean, I've seen farm models where they literally capture carbon as it leaves the cows. I, I once saw this farm where they just got a massive fucking balloon just filled with cow farts, aka CO2. I'm not sure what they were using them for, mm. but you could walk on the top of the tarpaulin, I suppose, walk on cow farts. But, uh, Make a great whoopee cushion out of it. You it know? really would. It would smell horrible. Can you yeah. imagine, like, piercing the side of it or something? Oof. And it's just the world's longest, slowest, most dr deadly fart whoopee That's cushion actually, noise. That's pretty good, actually. Yeah. Yeah. You'd probably be knocked out from the, <laughs> from the fumes. Unironically. Um, yeah. No. When you put it that way, yeah, I, I get what you mean by the carbon footprint being more propaganda than anything. Uh, yeah, th this doesn't seem like what else can we do, you know? Vote. Vote, yeah. Yeah, see, Brand, yeah, you like yeah, to yeah, avoid yeah. politics from a personal perspective, <laughs> which is fine. Hey, I got dragged into politics recently with my name being used as the phrase, let's go, Brandon, to criticize that guy from this America. Is true. So. You know, I'm well versed in politics now. I'd You're like extraordinarily to... versed, but yeah, I mean, <laughs> <laughs> strictly speaking, like uh, the, the the best way to attain change as an individual is to vote, mm. because I mean, we can't we, we as people do not have a level of influence over companies short of a class action lawsuit. Uh, but you can, as a people, affect a government. Like, it's the difference between us here in Australia choosing the Liberals and their 28% reduction target by, what, 2050 or so, compared to the Labour, the Greens and whatnot, who are all in very tight pickles. Mm. I mean, I can't remember what uh, European country it was, but there was a class action lawsuit held against the government by the youth of that country. It could have been fucking uh, Norway or some shit. It might have even, you know, just just a European country. They were they they were literally sued for not doing enough in regards to climate change by like a uh, young people in their own country like people can get shit done just we all kind of have to get together on this one yeah and I suppose... yeah not eating hamburgers isn't gonna fix it nor is turning off your light switches <laughs> pretty much i mean exactly at least from my perspective because I know nothing about politics, right? In all seriousness, I know nothing. I don't this know what true. the Labors do. I don't know what the, the Liberals do or the Greens do or anything like that. Last week, we had to vote, right? This is true. For our local council Indeed or whatever it was. Yeah. I filled that sheet out. Randomly. Okay. <gasps> How could you? Because I had no idea what any of it meant. You didn't even <laughs> vote for Redacted's name's dad? Oh, well, of course I did. Did you at least put him number one? I think so. Sure, I hope so, because he's the, land, he's the Labour candidate. Anyway, I, don't, I don't know what that means. <laughs> exactly. So I feel like I should have had a pep talk with a lot more people that I know. Yeah, no. See, yeah, I... <laughs> yeah, I saw, I, I, I realise now that y'all are actually just going to press random buttons. Yeah, because... <laughs> I don't know, there was no class in school that taught us what any of this stuff means. The last yeah. time I learned about local government, or just government in general, was in year Parks five. And recreation. No, oh, well, yeah, but that's America. And apparently America yeah. has lots of problems, so I don't know. Yeah, so uh, do we. We're mini-America for a reason. That makes sense, yeah. 
but like year five, which was eight years ago, something like that. Yeah, probably, probably something like that. But the point is, is that that was the last time I ever heard about anything to do with the government in the school setting. Yeah. So, which, yeah. yeah. What else can I do? Do I have to go out of my way to learn about this stuff on my own? I can't be bothered to teach myself about these random people who say they're going to do things for us. And I don't even know if they are, because what evidence do they have to show for it, you know? I don't know. Past it, records from previous leaders. Let's let's be honest though, I'm horrible with dates. I may be an ancient history student, but I'm horrible with dates and I'm horrible <laughs> with names. But if we just go by past previous records, mm. uh, Australia used to have a, d- a disease and control center commission institute okay. until the Liberal Party tore it down. And that would have been really useful during the pandemic. Right. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Kevin Rudd in 2008. See, here's a recent run. Yeah. He led us through the global financial crisis, which was something that America started and it snowballed across the globe. Oh, thank you. And (laughs) indeed. And we were actually the number one ranked country in the GDP. In in other words, like we suffered the least from the global financial crisis because what Kevin Rudd did is that he started handing out uh, those... The bonuses and whatnot. He started giving out money to people. He started circulating money through the economy, which is kind of what happened here, except we just got $25 tokens. Yeah. You know? <laughs> it's, it's, it's kind of... This, it's not really the same thing. It's not on the same scale. And what Kevin Rudd did is he, po- he poised us at the top of the peaking order after a global financial crisis, mm. but then he immediately got voted out... Uh, on the result of, I believe, there was some internal fighting, as there always is, mm. but also because Labour started getting unpopular. Because, do you recall when you couldn't really hear Ooh, car? That was a loud one. Sorry about that. Yeah. Do you just recall that period in time where, like, the slogan "Australia is a mining company, a, a mining country." Or like you just saw a lot of ads about just like people working out in the desert and shit. Did Honestly, you... no. I cool. I swear to you, yeah. This was like 2008, anyway. Okay. So. Yeah, back then I was watching yeah. Tom and Jerry. So you know. exactly. Yeah, but like back then, uh, Rudd was trying to lead towards renewable energies. He was trying to lead towards electric vehicles. He actually started the NBN uh, project. Yeah, I did hear about that. And then when yeah. he got booted, that's when, like, the MBN started to exactly go not good. So Because yeah. then the Liberals came in. That's right, yeah. Okay. And then instead of going full fiber optic from initial installation, they yeah. just borrowed Telstra's old copper wires and gave us the same shit that we already had for billions of dollars of debt. Yeah, thank you for doing that, guys. Yeah, really brilliant. appreciate it. Uh, let's see, another one. Medicare was instituted by labor, and for the 40 years that it has persisted, the liberal government has voted consistently on tearing it down in as many ways as possible. As we just saw this year, when about 400 uh, various operations were removed from Medicare. Right. So, and also a lot of uh, very vital medicines and whatnot like a, s- surgeries related to heart problems or general mm. limb disfigurement, etc. Those were taken off the bill and suddenly we're starting to look very American when it comes to our uh, mm. health system. That's not good. <laughs> very ungood. Okay, well, so this stuff all sounds very bad. Indeed. And, uh, so, like, why hasn't anything changed? Why haven't people voted for a Labour person? It's It sort of falls back and forth because Labour Labor was instituted as a party, as the common man's party, if you will. It's right. literally for the labourers. 
And mm. the people that benefit the least from this are tycoons in powerful industries. Okay. In particular, I'm going to name the mining industry, which right, is why right. you saw that mine. We saw that mining propaganda in 2008 mm. when Rudd was trying to move away from mining. Mm. Uh, you also see like a just large corporations like we saw it during the pandemic you recall mm. how like harvey norman was coming up in the news a lot because he received like the the founder of or the, the ceo of harvey norman a large uh facilities chain yada yada he, he just got paid a shit ton of money for no reason out of the coronavirus benefits oh of course <laughs> we're talking like billions of dollars i've completely jerry harvey there we go uh, Harvey Norman was actually making a profit during the pandemic, but he was still receiving pandemic payments. Right, yeah. So <laughs> he ended up getting like millions of dollars of money, which he did not need directly into his account. <laughs> I've, com uh, I've completely forgot the point that I was going on. Uh, yeah, that's right. So like the, it benefits the currently rich and powerful to have the Liberal Party in because the Liberal Party is a conservative party that will do things for the already rich and powerful. Mm. Like, it is the la it okay. was the Labour Party yeah. that g gave out those monetary grants to Harvey Norman, to Qantas, to the mining industry during the COVID pandemic. Yeah. Meanwhile, they still haven't reinstituted JobKeeper, even though, like... We've been in lockdown on and off for so long. Hmm. Uh, it, it's really just about like who has the most money. Because if we go back to 2008 with Kevin Rudd, uh, what happened, and this is where it gets really interesting, is because the people in power literally can hold a monopoly over media. In that, yeah. in 2008, Gina Reinhart, who was the richest person in Australia, and she is a mining industry tycoon. What she did is she literally bought a third of all. Uh, she literally bought a third of Channel Seven oh. and just <laughs> several other media corporate companies, mm. and she suddenly has the entire media industry in the palm of her hand. And that's when all the mining propaganda starts coming out. And that's when all these false studies start coming out that's saying, oh, that Kevin Rudd's plans to invest in renewable energies and electric vehicles will result in $580 million in debt, I believe it was, oh. or something like that. Only for after the election, when Kevin Rudd lost... For all of those studies to backtrack and say, oh, wait a minute, they would have made us two trillion. And currently that's been perpetual. It's, 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 a, it's a rabbit hole. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Yeah. I, God, that just, oof. I don't know how you fit all this stuff in your head, man. <laughs> I feel like my brain would explode trying to comprehend all yeah. this stuff that's going on before him. It gets worse if that yeah, happens. I, I, I can imagine. <laughs> I mean, so you can kind of understand now why, like, probably a lot of people just vote randomly when it comes. Exactly. To like a lot of people really just do not care, and they'll just vote yeah. for whatever party is already in power because who gives a shit? Well, I'll, I I didn't vote for the Liberal Party first. Just just <laughs> you know. Yes. Just, Very I, nice. I, I, I can't remember exactly who, but mm. yeah. I don't think there was even a name for it, so yes. who knows. Yeah. One thing I'll also mention that gives the Liberal Party a lot of mm. uh, added benefit is that they've formed a coalition with the Nationals Party, which is another smaller... <laughs> <laughs> I know, this isn't helping whatsoever. <laughs> but essentially a coalition is literally just an agreement between the two parties that they'll pull their votes together when it comes to an election. So if you vote for the Nationals or the Liberals, you're essentially voting for the Liberal National Party. And their agreement is that whenever they win an election, a Liberal leader will be Prime Minister, and then the Nationals leader will be Deputy Prime Minister. Oh. So yeah. It's okay. It's kind of like a bit biased. There, it is a little bit, yeah. because they've got a bigger share yeah. of the of the candidacy and whatnot. 
And okay. the Nationals Party are essentially liberals in cowboy hats. Right. <laughs> okay. <laughs> because they're, they're, they're national, they're, they're, they're very rural focused. So they're mm -hmm. more for like the, the rural outcrops of Australia. Right, yeah. Uh, but it's not in a very good way because mm. I don't know if you recall, but during the COVID pandemic, there was that incident where a lot of vaccines were being taken from rural areas into like the city. Like into no Sydney, <laughs> yeah, like <laughs> hundreds of thousands of vaccines were being <laughs> stolen from rural communities, including like native Aboriginal communities in particular. Oh. They were just being taken out of those towns and put into like Sydney and shit. Yeah, and this was happening in national seats, and these national leaders—they're saying, "Oh, it's okay, we'd do that, of course. Yeah, no worries. Yeah, get vaccinated. Woo." Of course, the people didn't fucking feel that way, but you know, yeah, they're, man, <laughs> they're, they're open to all of that. See, this is why I I keep myself grounded and just I rant about Pokemon every now and then. Exactly. <laughs> <laughs> uh, um. Yeah. And then it the, gets worse. Oh, good God. Yes, because the reason why the Labour Party and the Greens Party don't form their own coalition, because that would make sense. Okay, what does the Green Party do? So, Sorry. the Greens Party... <laughs> <laughs> so, like, you've got, like, the Liberals and the Nationals on... I'm just going to use right, because that's what ge people generally use. That just okay. means they're conservative, they help out rich people, and then you've got yeah. the left. You've got, like... Labour, which is like center left, which means that they're only a little bit left, and then you've got the Greens, which are even more left. Right. So like, they want drastic climate change action now, which we oh. do need. They want like immediate funding in a lot of social services and just mm. a lot more effectiveness in a lot of areas that they see more key, which is fair. I also want to see that, mm. but they haven't formed a coalition because. They just have a habit of backstabbing each other, oh, which God is horrible. <laughs> <laughs> because what they have a habit of doing is the Greens, when they see that Labour doesn't do anything left enough, they immediately start getting angry and then just start... They pull away their support from Labour, oh. which is how you, like, garner so, control. Because Labour right. needs the Greens to equal in waiting with the liberals and the nationals right so so the green party is just kind of like to the extreme almost they're, they're not extreme because there are even more extreme parties they're like independents oh. hmm. uh there are people who hold like one two seats in parliament right. uh they're really there to give voice to like isolated communities and whatnot yeah, yeah. They're not really political players. On occasion, they might sway the tide of a vote, but usually it comes down to the bigger powers at hand. Right. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> God. Yeah. It, it, it's 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 yeah. It's a lot, man. Um, it is. Where did you learn all this? Because <laughs> like. <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> uh, no, we haven't even gotten to Rupert Murdoch, who owns 70% of all Australian media. Is that the guy who's behind Binge? Fuck if I know. He probably I has a hand in it. Because <laughs> I'm pretty sure Binge is like the only reason why we don't have as many like good streaming services here in Australia. Would not be a surprise. His thing is like news outlets and whatnot. Oh, okay. Uh, Essentially, Rupert Murdoch is an American billionaire, oh. and <laughs> yeah, he he owns he owns news outlets in Europe, in America, Fox News, if that means anything, which oh, is just yeah, a bunch yeah. of propaganda and bullshit, which you've probably heard because of American news. And he also yeah. owns about seventy percent of all Australian media outlets. Oh, great! In some way, shape, <laughs> or form. I know, brilliant. And this man is a hard climate change denial. Uh, Oh, great. Uh, yeah, brilliant. Uh, an avid supporter of the Liberal Party because oh. he gets to do whatever he wants to the Liberal Party because he just holds so much financial power over them, if that makes sense. 
because he controls so much of the media, he can literally run like scandals in the Liberal Party's favor. Oh, for, oh. Like, he, he just has that much single handed control oh. over the media. <laughs> <laughs> That, like, he he uses that to his own political gain. So, obviously, the Liberal Party is indebted to this man, so they're just going to do whatever he says. Uh, So, it's kind of interesting when the media (laughs) runs the government. The mining industry runs the government. Mm. And the coal industry runs the government. So, how does anyone know what's going on? (laughs) Because... You've told me everything now for like the past 20 minutes and i got to admit I'm still a bit confused about some stuff, but, you know, I feel like that's a given. I'm a newbie at this, you know? This is fair. Yeah. I... <laughs> yeah, it, this, you're wrinkling my brain right now, man. Or well, I guess smoothing. Wrinkle, mm. Wrinkling. Wrinkling. Wrinkling, I think. Yeah. This yeah. is true. We are not koalas who literally have smooth brains. This is true. Yeah. Poor babies. Well, you were right before. Most of my knowledge about politics does come from Parks and Rec, and it's usually just funny word twisting debates and Paul this runs in true. there sometimes. So, you know. Well, thank you for indulging Indeed. me, Matt Callan. I all you need to know is that Kevin Rudd is the handball champion of Australia, and therefore oh. you should always vote for the Labour Party. We should have gotten him for missing it, duh. Can you, that would actually be really funny. <laughs> 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 oh, that would be hilarious, actually. <laughs> yeah, bring Paul Rudd, not Paul Rudd, Kevin Rudd. <laughs> yes, Big Kev. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, I'd, I'd pay to see that version. Me too, man. Me too. Yeah. <laughs> well, um, yeah, thank, thank you for... Yeah, me about that, Callan. It's that's a weird and wonderful world. Damn, why why isn't Reggie here? She's the one who asked me to tell her about politics, and then I ended up telling you about politics. Well, I needed to hear it because I suppose. Yeah, when I was writing on that ballot paper, I was like, "Who the hell is uh, Yevgeny Borgish?" Yeah, mm. I don't know who that is. Right? Neither do I. I'm not going to lie, I didn't know any of the names on that piece of paper because it's local government and it doesn't mean anything. Oh, okay, good. So, all right. Well, I mean, it do, it, I mean, okay. It's local government <laughs> and that individual people don't mean anything, but parties, oh. I, I mean, oh, it'd oh, still okay. be nice if you voted Labour and then Greens. Right, right, right. Technically, you don't even have to, like, put a number beside it, all of them. You just have to put numbers beside ones that you want to vote. Oh, okay. Well, I mean... Technically, you don't even have to write on it, right? Because no one's going to see it. You don't have to sign your name. You can just scribble yeah, on that's it. That's true. There's probably a lot of people that do that. Yeah, I mean, that'd be pretty funny. Like, you just yeah. draw a penis on one, right? Oof. I mean, that's the Australian attitude, isn't it? Yeah. I think that, that, that that's like a very, you know, Australians, have, I mean, they have we have a very laid back and not give as much of a shit as we could attitude to a lot of things. And I think one of those things is politics mm. because a lot of people just seem just, just fall into the idea that, ah, they're all the fucking same. They're all just out there to get us. So why the fuck should I care? When the, yeah. there are, there are people out there who are genuinely trying their best. Mm. Uh, there are some Leslie Nopes out in the world. Exactly. Hopefully. Kevin Rudd. Yeah, there's some Paul Rudd's out in the world as well. Exactly, he's trying his hardest. Yeah. God damn it, the man's a handball champion of the world. Yes. He graduated from Australia to the world because I'm pretty sure no one else plays handball like the Australians. Well, there's the European handball. They play with bigger balls than us, though. That's what she said. <laughs> yeah, that's, that's cheating, though, you know? Mm, yeah, because yeah. then there's more ball to grab and stop it from going out. <laughs> exactly, yeah. The whole idea is you're meant to have tiny targets, so that way it's more challenging for both parties. Exactly. I suck at handball, man. Oh, that was horrible. Yeah. Last time I played, I think, was year nine. Give or take, yeah. Four four years ago-ish, I think. Yeah. I don't think I could bend down that low. Well, yeah, definitely not. Not not nowadays, yeah. Yeah. I haven't moved in months. I've turned into a vegetable. Couch potato, right? Because, like, like, you know... We're sitting all the time. 
Exactly. That, that's me at least. But, but, but yeah. Well, the biggest then, thing in the world. Yes, I've got a lot to think about now, Callan. So thank you for that. Indeed. We'll just we'll just tell Reggie to listen to this episode. And then ah, that's fine. We'll just do this again next episode. Not really. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> Um, but, but yeah, well, uh, I gotta be honest with you. I didn't plan anything to talk about today because no, it's okay. quite frankly, nothing has happened to me in the past few weeks. That's been and that's completely fair. Yeah. Um, you know, I was, I was just saying that to buy me some time to try and think of something to <laughs> add on. I mean, I do believe that the old proverbial insult goes that I hope you live in interesting times. You know, and the fact that yeah. nothing's, you know, because living in interesting times such as COVID fucking sucks. Mm. You know, you finally had some peace and quiet and not that interesting times. Things can settle down a little. Yeah. Mentally. A little bit. Yeah. Ish. Ish. Mm. I mean, God, I'm, I'm really, I don't have anything. Uh... <laughs> Wow. Yeah. I mean, how how's uni going for you, Cal? You're gonna you're gonna go back next year, yeah, right? I'm yeah. gonna jump right back on in there. Mm, good yeah. on you. Good on you. Yeah. You know, yeah. turn up to that final exam this time. There you go. Not throw the... the whole course <laughs> by forgetting or you know, neglecting to thinking I had time. That's the way. Yeah. Well, yeah. Turns I, uh, out you can't take a final exam three days after the final exam, you know? That that would make a bit of sense, yeah. Yeah, I well, hadn't considered that. <laughs> hopefully by then everything's back to normal. We can go on campus because from oh, what no, I've I'm heard... I'm expecting another year, but go on. I hope not because from what I've heard, for people who have to do exams online at uni, you got to like... Uh, turn your camera on, show off your entire room just to make sure, just so they know you don't have notes mm -hmm. hiding around some kind of corner or something like that. It's a really just arduous process just so they can confirm that you're not cheating. Just while you're put your home. notes in your pocket. Exactly. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> well, like, oh, no, I never thought of this. Yeah, I mean, they might tell you to empty your pockets, but then you could just put them in your pants. They're not going to ask you to exactly. put your pants down, so... Exactly. I don't know. It just feels a bit pointless and kind of creepy that they want to see your whole room, but yeah. it is a little bit creepy. Like, God damn it, my room's my room. Yeah, I'm, I'm just yeah. lucky. I don't have exams at all. <laughs> oh. oh, brilliant! Absolutely spiffing, tally ho. Yeah. Speaking of brilliant, damn Indeed. it! I was really hoping I would find something along that sentence, but I just kind of didn't. You know. Indeed. Wow. Um. Indeed, 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 indeed. Well, okay, answer me this question, Callan. All right. Why are waffles in the? Why are waffles shaped the way they are? Why? <laughs> That's a brilliant question. I imagine it's because yep. the pockets of the waffles allow for them to hold more of whatever topping you desire, right. like. Mm -hmm. It's the same way that, like, you have those lollies which are indented so that they have more surface area, so that they express more taste simultaneously. Like, they're the lifesavers, you know how they've got that little concave yeah, yeah. dip? Right, right. So that yeah. there's more flavor coming across at once. Oh, okay. Yeah, because there's more surface area. <laughs> right. Well, that... I reckon it's the same for waffles. They're just, like, they're, they're just intentionally picked this... So that they can have pockets of delicious goodness, such as chocolate and ice cream, or just hold things, you know? That makes sense. I'm, I'm reading here now, just like from a quick Google search. So Indeed. apparently, in the 15th century, oh, du that. <laughs> Ooh, yeah, Dutch waffel makers began forging rectangular plates with a grid pattern. Although no one knows for sure, experts believe the waffle grid pattern that we know today came about naturally as a way to cook less batter over a greater surface area. So, oh, yeah. so yeah, it's that more surface area, hmm. less, yeah. That makes sense, and that's surprisingly practical. It yeah, it is. But what that makes means it, they're yeah. skipping out on fucking waffle. Well, 
motherfuckers. <laughs> yeah, I mean, it tastes good still. Yeah, but where's my goddamn waffle? True. Yeah, <laughs> like they should they should sell the waffles waffle that we know bricks. and love. Yeah, exactly. They exactly. sell like, the waffle bricks on this waffle bits. You know, that's what they oh are. My God. Like you have chip packets, but you got like waffle packets. So it's just yeah. the, the squares. No wasting. You know, <laughs> it's not like they cut out the squares though. <laughs> What? Are you sure? Yeah. I'm pretty sure that's how that works. <laughs> oh, no. Um, yeah. See, this is just me going through my emotions. See, that would work if it was yeah. Krispy Kreme. Sorry to interject. No, no. But, you know, good. like, they have the donuts and then they cut out the circles and the holes and then they just throw them out. Like, yeah. I'm, I'm sure they I'm sure they started making donut bites, but like I sincerely doubt there's a donut bite for every donut, you know? Donut bite, yeah. I don't know. I mean... <laughs> See, I, I could not work a Krispy Kreme because they just throw out so many donuts every day and I'll be no, so tempted good. to just start snacking and I'm pretty sure that's against company policy. Yeah, I mean... You could... The pay for them, I guess. But then, I suppose. Are you gonna really eat all those donuts? I'll damn well die trying. <laughs> <laughs> uh. Oh no! If you would die trying listening to this podcast, then just let us know down in the comments below. Go yeah. to the underscore Jolly. She does art. She, does she comes art on here once on occasion. Yeah, rarely. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, on Twitter, yeah. Instagram. She was the momager. Not on Facebook. Wasn't it? Well, Facebook yeah, momager. So it's in Tumblr. Timber. 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 Yeah. Oh, okay, so. Yeah. And we, us. We oh, are us. on Twitter, Instagram, TikTok, Tumblr. We never use it. Yeah. You can listen to our episodes on Spotify, YouTube, Apple Hell iTunes, yeah. Google Podcasts. Caster thingy, some other shit. Other things that we might have forgotten to upload to at some stage. Who really yeah. knows? Nobody Either knows. Way. Yeah, uh, hopefully you'll start seeing trailers back on TikTok and Instagram soon. I just some need point. to remind myself to do that. <laughs> someday. It's um, yeah, so someday. Yeah, hopefully it'll soon. happen. Because we're almost Indeed. at the big five zero. And for that special five zero, we are true. planning something, fitty. right? Yeah. 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 It's yeah. Like, well. When's that? Like two weeks? Sure. Uh, oh, maybe it doesn't have to be. We might take a break for Christmas. Who knows? We'll, we'll, we'll we might just go to 52 or something instead, you know? Yeah. Because 52 right. is a year, isn't it? 52 weeks in a year? Something like that. Something like that. Probably. Well, then. Alan, I think... Uh, I think we'll end it there then, hey? I believe so. It's Fuck been a pleasure. Now. Bye bye. Uh, okay, Callan, please yes. explain why are watermelons so hard? Well, it's got to protect the innards of the watermelon's flesh, does it not? If anything, watermelons now are relatively soft, and we've genetically modified them in such a way to that their exterior to flesh ratio is completely out of whack. Because back then it just used to be like the massive husk and then just like a little ball of flesh in the middle. Oh. But like we could only eat the flesh, so we just genetically modified them through selective breeding, which is how genetically modifying food works. And then we just made them really fleshy. There and we go. Yeah. Look at so that. So it's hard because it needs to be because of nature's design, but it could be harder, but we genetically modified them.